Now, this is just my view, personally, is that with where we're at in the wrestling industry right now, I think it's actually pretty cool and beneficial, certainly for the talent, that they have viable, legitimate options. They have multiple viable, legitimate options that, you know, especially depending upon your name, your level of talent, your skill, they make a pretty handsome salary, relatively speaking, although I still think wrestlers are tremendously underpaid and too dumb to do anything about it. Sorry, not sorry, because it's kind of true. Um, but relative to the industry is that if you're not happy in WWE, you could potentially go to an AEW, you could potentially go to a New Japan, and for a lesser degree, you could go somewhere like an Impact Wrestling and you can make a living plying your craft. You know, that's cool. If you're tired of AEW, you can go to New Japan, you could go to Impact, you could go to WWE, the big evil empire. You can do all of that. So it's nice to have those options. The industry is ultimately a better place when the talent has options. Sometimes a fresh slate, a change of scenery can do a lot of good. It really can. Um, which brings me to the topic of John Moxley and the reports apparently that his AEW contract is almost up. I personally may have missed it, but I didn't see anything talking about a contract extension for him and anything like that. So of course, especially on the heels of what happened with Cody Rhodes, where he left AEW and he went back to WWE, is bringing up a lot of conversation around what's next for John Moxley and what's he going to do. Is he going to go and stay with AEW for the long term? Is he going to go back to WWE, a place that he said made him so unhappy at one point in time? What will he do? What should he do? And the reality is these are interesting questions because if you're somebody like a John Moxley, you only get but so many times to make such an important career potentially altering decision. How many times do you really get the chance, especially if you were a guy like a John Moxley, where you could say that you have some leverage that an AEW and a WWE may both want and value your services, the amount that they want or value your services may be part of the whole negotiation game and all part of the ploy to see how much you can get, exercise, maximize your leverage, hopefully. But the reality is, is that both of those companies are going to clearly, you know, covet him to a degree. They're going to value him. They're going to want him. So it gives him options and that's pretty cool for him. Now, when you look at WWE, the whole thing about, well, Moxley said in the past that that place made him so goddamn miserable. We've seen it time and time again. How many times has somebody shit talked Vince, shit talked the WWE, and when the opportunity in the moment was right, they went back and they were happy and they were yuck yucking and chuck chucking and all of that shit. See Cody Rhodes. Oh, it's not a political play. No, I'm happy I won't go back there. Of course you will. Like the only thing you should believe about professional wrestling and professional wrestlers at this point, if you've learned nothing else, is that if they're telling you one thing, assume the other is actually true. Like they're so disconnected from reality, they can't tell sometimes where the truth begins and fantasy ends or fantasy begins and truth ends. They can't tell. And that's their whole life is working people. But for Moxley, like that whole stuff about you know, just because he's bad-mouthed Vince or the WWE in the past, that he was miserable there, felt like it was a prison. It has no bearing on the situation right now. It really doesn't. And frankly, if he, if it does, then Moxley would be kind of a dumbass, wouldn't he? Because why wouldn't you, if you have the opportunity to negotiate with multiple parties for your next long-term contract, why would you not want both parties involved, even if you truly only seriously want to consider one place, whether that's going back to WWE or staying with AEW, why would you under leverage yourself? Why would you under position yourself? You see this happen all the time in sports where a player and their representation will negotiate heavily with the team and that's only because they're trying to get a more desirable destination or location team or city to up their bid. Like that's the beast, it's the name of the game. Let's not begrudge people for having that leverage. We should celebrate that, that's cool. A lot of us wish we had that type of leverage in our careers and in the working world. 
But if John Moxley wants to go back to the WWE, a place, frankly, where they could use somebody with an established name where he knows that he will be one of the top acts there, and that's he's been utilized well there at times in the past, and then eventually it kind of ran his course, and I think everybody was ready for a divorce or a break for a period of time. Like, why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he go back? You could certainly argue that it makes a whole lot of damn sense. You know, Seth Rollins is still a prominently featured player there. We see what the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns is doing now. Like, there's certainly absolutely a position near the top for a guy like John Moxley where he could go in and he could make a shit ton of money. And if you're talking about, hey, you want to do stuff outside of wrestling, which company is going to give you the much bigger platform of exposure and infrastructure to be able to do that? It sure as hell is not AEW. <laughs> Excuse me, it's WWE with the Peacock Network. It's WWE with their multiple primetime shows, including one Friday night. I've heard two hours that's on free over-the-air broadcast television on Fox talking about SmackDown. Not to even mention the two-hour show Monday night on USA Network Raw. Like, this is no disrespect to AEW. It's just a statement of reality that WWE's infrastructure is so vastly superior at this point because they've had a decades, multiple decades level head start. You know, it's certainly got to be a reason that Cody went there. May not be a primary reason, sole reason, certainly, but it doesn't hurt. The connections for a WWE, much greater. The exposure from a WWE, much greater. The mainstream relevancy, even in this day and age, talking about wrestling, whatever there is left of mainstream relevancy, is certainly going to be higher with WWE than it is in AEW. And maybe Moxley's at a place where he's been away for a few years, He's enjoyed what he's doing in AEW. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. Who the hell knows? Seems like he does. But he says, hey, you know, my earnings potential is greater in WWE. Being set up long term better in WWE. My platform would be greater in WWE. This was nice, but I want to go elsewhere. Uh, you could also say, you already saw how WWE treated you at the end. What makes you think it would be any different this time? It feels like you get a lot more creative control and a lot more control over your character and what you do and what you're involved with in an AEW. Now, sometimes that could be to your better betterment. Sometimes that could be to your detriment. And you can say that for a lot of the guys and gals in AEW. But Moxley always struck me as kind of a dude that likes to be a little more you know, willy-nilly and free-spirited and doesn't want as much control over him and wants that freedom of expression. You're not going to get that in WWE compared to AEW. That's just a reality. Now, whether that's always a good thing or not, you know, you can debate or discuss. But, you know, clearly you'll be able to do more of what you want to do with what you envision the John Moxley character as, not a Dean Ambrose car character, but the John Moxley character. You can do that in AEW way more than you can in a WWE. And, you know, as far as John Moxley goes, I would say, you know, which travel schedule is tougher? Certainly the WWE's is. Which environment is going to put more pressure on you? Certainly the WWE is. I don't know what the dynamics of the working relationship between Tony Khan and John Moxley are. He might enjoy the hell out of it. He might not respect Tony Khan one bit. Who knows? I don't know. And you can say, well, you said this about him in public and it's good. Well, what the fuck does that mean? You think these guys are always going to air out their dirty laundry? Who knows is my point. But I look at it like this. If you're trying to figure out, will he sign with WWE? Will he stay with AEW? What should he do? Well, at the end of the day, he should do whatever the fuck he wants to do. If that means he wants to go back to the evil empire and be a top guy there, so be it. If he wants to stay in AEW because he likes the company, he likes the vision, he likes working with Tony Khan, he likes the creative re freedom, and he feels like he can get a similar salary there, then so be it. Like, I personally would say, if anything, Moxley, if he plays his cards right and he hasn't already re-signed, he could leverage the WWE to get more money from Tony Khan than he probably would be able to do leveraging AEW to WWE. Like, Vince is petty. The WWE would want to have him, sure, I believe. But they wouldn't have that same desperate desire or need to have him like a Tony Khan and AEW would. 
is Moxley's actually been a world champion for them. Moxley is one of their featured attractions. Moxley is one of their biggest stars. He certainly is a more sizable, significant loss to the company than a Cody Rhodes was. I mean, if you can't see that, I don't know what's wrong with you. What do I think he should do or will do? I guess is isn't all that relevant in the grand scheme of things, nor is it for any of you, but we talk about it, so why not? You know, as long as the money's similar and as long as he's happy where he currently is, I see no reason for Moxley to go back to WWE. Because even if they give you the whole song and dance, it might be good for a little while, but damn, you are rolling the dice of being right back in the same spot 12 to 18 months from now that you were a couple of years ago when you got so angry and you wanted to leave. You've done all that stuff there. You've been world champion. You've been at WrestleMania multiple times. Like, you've wrestled all the top names there for the most part. AEW, there's still so much more you can do. And sure, it'd be on a smaller platform, smaller scale, but you know, the, the, that size of platform and the money itself isn't everything, especially because I can't imagine that Tony Khan would automatically lose in a resource battle with Vince McMahon. So Dean Ambrose, excuse me, John Moxley, sorry, it still slips out every once in a while. He should do whatever the hell he wants to do. But know that whatever drove you away from WWE before hasn't fucking changed. And that when you talk about wrestling fans and you talk about the landscape and environment that you're involved with and the direction that your character is taken, frankly, as long as the compensation and contract makes sense, it makes, in my opinion, way more sense for a Moxley to stay with an AEW than it did a Cody. That's just my two cents.